It's Malanka time, motherfuckers, and today we're going to be reviewing the brand new patch that came out. Now, of course, I know I'm a little bit late. You could cry all you want, but yeah, we're going to be at least giving my opinion on it and all of that. But of course, I may miss things. I may disregard some things because I'm not... Th my mind isn't that into Company Furious at the moment to know what was what beforehand and blah, 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 blah. You'll kind of see it as we go along a little bit. But mainly I'm going to be giving my opinion. I am no way a god at balancing or anything else like that. But just from reading this first little paragraph here, uh, after over three months of countless posts, of forum feedback, numerous surveys and tournaments, and over ten mod iterations, the final changes put forward in the Winter Balance Preview are ready to be released into the live game. Relic is one lazy motherfucker. I really doubt that they put as much hard work into these decisions as actually p making Cup of the is fucking stable, okay? They, no. Just no. First of all, that is a load of shit that they put hard work into this. I b I'd blow myself and put it on Pornhub, okay? So let's start off with the general stuff. Reinforcement, half-track, and transports. We want to make you want to make using these units less frustrating as a reinforcement platform. Well, when you take away the option to reinforce from them a little bit, I I think that's a problem. I think that's a problem. Uh, reinforcement half-tracks now shared veteracy from infantry squads and weapon teams. Okay. Load times for half-track are standardized to two. I did know load times actually fucking mattered, but okay, I guess so in a... 1v1 scenario where that 0 0.75 seconds could have saved your squad, okay? Given a handbrake ability to prevent unwanted movement, and the two can can carry mortar teams. 251 half track. That's nice. I like carrying. I still believe that half track should be able to carry MG and mortar teams. They shouldn't be able to be used in half tracks, but they should be able to get in there. And I do believe, kind of, with the case with snipers, though, of course, we don't want a scout car incident or clown car where you would put them in there and they would be able to fire. Just as a transportation kind of thing, I think that uh, that they should be able to move within them. It, it kind of makes sense. Shared veterancy, which is nice. Very nice, indeed. Um, for snipers, we feel that sniper's cloak ability is too overperforming. Really? Really? <laughs> really? Making them extremely difficult to counter with infantry. Uh, you're not supposed to counter them with infantry. You're supposed to counter them with an armored car or a fast-moving vehicle or a lucky mortar shot. Or counter sniping. Or artillery. Those are a lot of counters. Though, of course, a very nice micro sniper can be a real pain in the ass. But then again, you kind of want to reward them for a really good micro sniper. Uh, when firing a shot or using an offensive ability, when not camouflaged, the unit will be unable to become camouflaged for 10 seconds. Snipers cannot cloak until out of combat for 3 seconds. Meh. Meh. Now, I hate snipers just as much as the next one. Now, whether or not I I, I just hate snipers in general, Company Furos won flashbacks of permanent cloaked snipers. and ugh. Um, I think they should reduce it to 5, the camouflage. Or, or just have it a lower 10 is too fucking stupid, or whatever. But I do believe that uh, the fact that you that they said we feel a sniper's cloak ability is overperforming. Uh, okay, okay, brah. Stealth changes. To bring other stealth units in line with the cloaking changes made to snipers, we have applied the following recloaking restrictions. Anti-tank guns. Anti-tank cannot recloak until out of combat. Neither type of unit can recloak within 10 seconds of firing a shot. Non-sniper stealth infantry stealth infiltration unit cannot recloak until out of combat for four seconds. Steel steel <laughs> stealth infantry cannot recloak within ten seconds of having used a defense ability. I would half the ten second to five and whatever if you want to make it in line. Whatever stealth to uh, Vicatin could only be the real issue. I could see with stealth just because um, it can actually you know it's it's very fast maneuvering the stealth, so I could see how that could be an issue to a point, but it's never been an issue to the point of nerfing the stealth or anything else like that, and it's very easy to spot, because, oh, they're capping the VP without any infantry in it, I wonder what could be in there, magical, just magical, 
and for veterancy rates from infantry-based anti-tank. Anti-tank infantry squads were attaining veterancy disproportionately fast compared to anti-infantry squads. No fucking shit. Now, it's obviously understandable that this was happening, and it's been happening for quite some time, and the fact that they actually want to touch it now is rather weird. Um, but the reason they do that is because anti-infantry are targeting a smaller health pool of infantry, because it's infantry, it's not a fucking tank. While anti-tank teams can stay afar and usually aim fairly well, kind of, and it would probably be a health pace, a health base damage, like a certain percent. So of course they were going to do more damage. Now there's one thing that Relic does that actually Blizzard does, and that is when something, and this is going to apply for everything here. This is not just the veterancy rates or anything else like that. It is basically that they, when they see something overperforming or overdoing this, they will nerf it into the ground, and not, and it will not be resurrected until patches or the next expansion later. In Blizzard's case, and we don't even know when the next patch is going to be out to fix some things. But yeah, I would say two instead of three, if you really want to lower the patch. I'd never seen a problem with this, but yeah. I, I shrug my shoulders. So the M17 quad. We want to tone down the performance of the quad to be in line with light tanks and other suppression platforms. In order to make infantry counter to this unit viable, the M17 can no longer suppress squads on the move. Now as for the M17 quad changes, the fact that they said they wanted to be in line with light tanks is rather surprising because the last time I checked, it wasn't a steward or a look, so it or a Panzer II. Her her still want that in game, or Panzer III too as well. To know that, just did just just couldn't fathom it. Just couldn't fathom. Uh but this is where I don't know many things about the M17 is because I've never seen really anyone abuse it. Now this is where I'm going to add that I don't know everything, obviously. So I don't know how this was, how this came to be in terms of this unit that it needed to be nerfed. Um, but there's one thing I would like to state, and that is if this unit or anything in this whole winter, you know, it's not winter, balance patch was, um, what is it? was balanced for 1v1 specifically, or even the possibility of 2v2, that should not happen. I Even, even though this is a personal opinion and or belief, I do believe that Company of Heroes should have a separate client for professional or, you know, very high-ranking 1v1, 2v2 kind of thing. Like, if you really want to get, I guess, for ranked or something, just because... If you're going to do this in live, some 1v1 changes won't help 3v3 or 4v4 or even 2v2, and the same goes for all of them. They don't help each other when you try to balance specifically, though a broad sp perspective of balancing kind of helps, but then it doesn't. And I think if you, especially for 1v1s, if you really want to make 1v1 as even and balanced as possible, you should create its own client for tournaments and other things such as that. And I think that you should leave live company of heroes in an overall balanced state or try to but relic is quite lazy so yeah there is that <sighs> so now last but not least before we get into factions mortars the escalation of mortar powers made them overperform compared to other type of most more costly artillery pieces you know why because they're fucking accurate okay they're fucking accurate now there are some accurate big Artillery pieces, yeah, but you have to admit some of them are really fucking inaccurate. At least in my in my opinion. <clears throat> Vet 3 no longer grants range increase to auto attacks. Didn't know that was a problem. I know the American Mortar uh, was really good compared to accuracy and stuff, but I don't know. But what will be in its place of Vet 3? Wasn't it just increase range to its auto attacks? I'm, I'm kind of uncertain. But anyways... We're going to go to Soviets. This is going to be interesting, and this is going to be a little bit of a rant. And I kind of have to hurry this up. Uh, the combination of... The, yeah, okay, so Penal's basically... <clears throat> Penal's got nerfed to shit. And it's really stupid. So, they no longer gain access to the raw ability or flamethrowers. Now gain two PTRS upgrades. Fucking stupid. Stupid, 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 stupid. 
Honestly, yeah, yeah, just just dumb. Now, I know, I guess everyone shows penals, but here's the thing, though, that a lot of people are making, is that what do Soviets do for anti-infantry? There's only so much you can do with MG's early game. Conscripts suck a major cock. And, of course, I'm not looking through the rest of the buffs and nerfs, so this, you know, we're going to go down the list. But there's no anti-infantry. Now, I mean, you can get shock troops or guards, but that's two CPs away and those two CPs, and even in terms of a competitive standpoint, you could you get fucked up really good in those couple minutes, and it could really hurt you long game. But even then, to have to wait to there and then have them to be really expensive while you have the SDGs for Volk, you have LMG and Panzer Grenadiers for uh, Wehrmacht and Strom Pioneers for OKW. And, and the Americans, you got LMGs and, well, if you really want to call them flamethrowers for if you go uh, Fury Company. But yeah. So overall, this is stupid and I hate PTRSs. They're a complete fucking joke. Um, of course, for against light tanks, it's okay, but usually, I would assume if you were going in some, if you were really wanting to win the match, you would go a doctrine with penals, not penals, <laughs> a doctrine with guards or shock troops or something of that sort, so you would gain access to some kind of PTRS, and even then, by that point, you'd have at least one conscript, maybe, for anti-tank grenade, and you would have ATs out, or even like a T-70, and even then, you wouldn't need the PTRS. So the PTRS costs... 60 munitions, same damage as guard, PTRS, accuracy lowered, has a 0 0.33 drop rate. So, the hurrah ability, I am really don't care. I care about everything else. If it doesn't... 35 to 30, this is meh. Not a lot of people use the... Sa oh, it's only... I don't want to say a lot of people use the satchel charge, but to really save the penals to vet 3 and then get, you know, that much munitions off, I don't think it truly matters. I mean, what you really want to do, I think if you wanted to lower the penal ability, I guess what you could do is uh, increase its pomp camp, reduce its um, accuracy a little bit. Uh, maybe not accuracy, but the, see, that's veteran C accuracy. Just reduce its accuracy a little bit, and maybe you could move the Ura and just leave everything the same. I don't know. I am, again, no balance patch thing, but, because I'm not sitting here mathing everything out, and blah, 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 blah. Um, satchel charges. Being a satchel charge now also behave as vehicle snares. Friendly fire, multiplier increase from 25 to 50. Dumb. Cause engine snare on target. Eh. Satchel will stick to vehicles if it hits them on a trajectory to the target. That's okay, but, uh, I don't, I don't think that this helps because cause I don't think this helps to, uh, I mean, it would be nice for some kind of anti-tank kind of thing, but mainly penals are used for, you know, anti-infantry with the flamethrower, so. So guards. Guards were overperforming, really. Really, guards were overperforming. I have yet to see this, kind of. Um... Appearing to supplement any strategy, thus limiting variation Soviet commanders. Well, some of the commanders are fucking shit. And the ones with jock troops or guards that have IS-2 or 30... F not 85. 85s. T-35 85s. And the 152 are pretty much the ones you want to go. Or the KV one. Because you got the B-4 howitzer. Those are pretty much the only okay commanders that you could... That are all around in a decent spot. So... Guards can now rebuy lost items and equipment. I like that. Um, damage versus vehicles, dumb. Damage versus vehicle and penetration remains 40. Manpower increase, dumb. Uh, to me, guards always died really fast, though again, this is my own personal opinion from what I've seen. Um, to me, guards aren't that magical rape unit kind of thing. So the f their fucking grenade gets reduced. Dumb. Damage reduced from 0.5 to 0.5. The same as to my overall delay. Whatever, man. Nope. T-70. We feel the T-70's high damage in AOE allowed it to wipe out infantry too effectively. Okay. I don't know. I want to know what kind of pot you're smoking. <clears throat> but, well, no, it can. 
it can kill infantry if you really migrate properly. But by the time the T-70 comes out, someone should have a Puma or a Lux, or it's going to get Panzerfaustin, or there should be some kind of a Ketten on the field. And again, I think that this may be a 1v1 scenario that where the T-70 would be, like, really good if you had that good early game. Manpower increased? No. Health increased? Okay. Crew repair removed? Dumb. Reload speed increased. Eh. Just eh. I feel like this is a 1v1 kind of thing. Capture point ability removed. Stupid. But I really... I can understand, though. That one I can understand. Just because, yeah. It's sort of like the double IS... <laughs> Remember that replay that uh, I, it got removed or for some reason? I forget why. Uh, the two IS-2s that were level 2 and they both cap both VPs because of that ability. It's so funny. So Vamacht. Medikits. To give Vamacht more staying power in the field, Medikits will now fully heal up squads. Nice. I like this. Pioneers. We felt the Pioneer damage output was underperforming. That's nice. Uh, even though I don't think Pioneers really need a damage boost because they're fucking Pioneers, but I don't know. I want Vamok to do good, but that's my personal little bit bias. So for Assault Grenadiers, reinforced cost lower, grenade assault munitions from 45 to 30, uh, grenade assault aim time ready to reduce by half to allow faster throwing, I don't like that, squad leader armored reduced, medikits removed, veteran C1 grant same percent receive. Who's charged at sprint? Fix an issue where interesting thing. So I like the fact that they buffed Assault Grenadiers because it is my favorite doctrine. Though I don't think having a faster grenade assault is good. Just because, yeah, I don't I don't I don't think that would be good. Medical kits removed, I think that's kind of stupid. But they're relying on you to build the medical bunker. Um But yeah, I don't I don't like that. Though I do like the veterancy grants ten percent uh grants the veterancy one now grants ten percent received accuracy and reduces recharge on sprint by twenty five. That's nice. Uh, but yeah, the reinforcement reduction, even though it's two manpower, I still think it's I don't know. To me, it's just meh. It's just like the bulletins of Company Furious. They're like man, they're such a small percentage that to me, it, sometimes it doesn't feel like it matters unless you really stack up the bulletins. Panzer Grenadiers are a strong unit, but their timing means other factions already have veterancy on their infantry. Make it difficult for Panzer Grenadiers to scale veterancy versus their opponents, which is true. I do believe this because I've seen in a couple of recent replays that some people get Panzer Grenadiers, and it's sort of like shock troops now with the penals. Is that when you get shock troops out, like some people already have one two veterancy, and that's if you have the manpower to even buy it, uh, one squad, and it's just. Kind of thing. Uh, G43 package. Also fixed storm, uh, storm pioneers. Storm pioneers. Storm troopers, but not grenadiers. Far aim time multiplier reduced. Boost long range DPS. Now increases sight range by 20%. I like this. I like the. I always like the G43 package. Just sort of like I always liked um, elite troops before it was nerfed and it's complete garbage. Uh, you got G43s and you could just do some cool stuff with Grenadiers at Vet 3. Elite Troops, Elite Doctrine Stormtroopers now have access to Panzer Grenadier G43s and can upgrade G43s in enemy territory. I like that, but Stormtroopers are still fucking trash. So, eat it. But it's okay that they received a little buff. They, they kind of do, but I still feel like you're still going to go with Grenadiers unless you really want that Panzer Grenadier for some serious anti-infantry or to really get out of Shrek. So in case a T-70 or something is rolling up on you and it's poking you, you can, you know. So the scout car. The scout car is always trash. Make it to Company Furious 1 scout car and then we're talking. I uh, was just going to finish as well. Other light vehicles and suffered manpower cost. Increased? Dumb. Because the scout car sucks major cock. Fuel increased? Sucks. Uh, spotting. Veteran C1. No. Auto cannon accuracy. Near damage, rate of fire multiplier. I like the penetration. Mid-range distance. I don't know. The scout car, these, this right here, I don't, I don't like. I still think the scout car is trash. It's okay for hunting snipers and dealing with half tracks to a point, but its armor is so weak and feeble and it's just... 
It, it, it just doesn't stand up to the Company of Heroes 1 version, and I think that's how they should revert it to the Company of Heroes 1 version, or try to make it so. MG42, not properly tracks infantry, accuracy reduced, accuracy increased with veterancy, okay. MG42 range distance, MG42 accuracy modifier versus snipers. Um, I like the fact that, so this would almost promote uh, getting the bulletins for MG accuracy, because you gain that accuracy back. Okay, they want you to earn the accuracy, which is, eh. So the Stug E was proving overly effective for its cost. Really now, really load of shit. As a call-in tank that could bypass tech requirements, furthermore, a target weak point allowed the Stug E to have a strong anti-tank utility, even though it's prim primarily an anti-tank vehicle. So why did you give it to, to it in the first place? Also, the Stugi is supposed to kind of, and I put kind of in quotations, is to combat Stuarts and Luxes and stuff. Even though it's a call-off and or a fixed gun, it that's what I always perceived it as. And of course it was an anti-infantry, and even then it matters. It, yeah, by the time you get to 7 or 8 CPs, whatever it is now, I'm pretty sure someone has a comet or something. Something to really outrank it. So the fact that was over effective for its cost is a load of shit. The fact health reduced really are we really going to reduce the health? Reload time is nice. No it's not. No it's not nice. Never mind. I take that back. Sorry. I is retard. Recharge time between so damage versus gears increase. Fire is so moving AoE damage reduced. AoE distance. Uh Scatter max. Yeah, they need... To, no. This... This right here. It's dumb. And this whole sentence... Not sentence, but this little... This little this little description is dumb. Uh, I don't... I don't know. I don't see it that way. I don't... I don't... The target weak point... If you didn't want it to... I mean... I don't know. It's... If you didn't want it to have it, you should have had it in the first place. And even then, it gives it at least some use in late game. Because any kind of Jackson or AT gun is going to fuck up your little Stug E. Okay. So, I don't... Yeah. <clears throat> so the Puma serves the role of anti-vehicle and soft counter to tanks. However, the target weak point ability stun the heaviest of tanks made it over for form. Yeah, I could see how that could be really annoying. Especially in a 1v1 scenario, which I feel like this one is. But I really don't care. So the ability to equip two of them to on a squad was resulting in overperforming long range DPS for squads, dribbles, riflemen, or as cheap as rear echelon. Um haven't seen a lot of people use M nineteen nineteen light machine guns, but I could understand that. I think I have gone even back then, people some would use this and you have like Vet three and all they were ridiculous to see some of them equip with the light machine guns and you get completely wrecked, but I don't think they were that much of a problem, but it's not it doesn't really matter, because everyone I think standardizes the bar anyway to improve Vamox late game scaling have received a slight reduction in their vet 3 bonus to receive their accuracy, so here, so here's my thing let's nerf riflemen to make Vamox better or why don't you buff Vamox to be on par with the the United States wow, magic magic concept so the mortar barrage I've been causing this unit to overperform most engagements. Yeah, a lot of people don't like the mortar, the American mortar, so I agree with that. Uh, even though I'm not going to read it, I'm just going to just over it a little bit. Vehicle crews, critical repair allowed US vehicles to escape too easily after getting caught by a panzer faust or hitting a mine. No fucking shit. Uh, veteran C recruit increased to the... Oh, so 25, delay increase. So this was a much needed nerf, I do agree, vehicle crews. It has gone too long. There's so many vehicles that got out, like, the the classic, the, the classic of popping smoke. Well, no, just even walking away just enough on a line of sight. Popping out, fix the, um, fix the critical damage to your engine or something, and then just driving off into the sunset. Yeah. So Stuart, we felt the Stuart was overperforming, really, again. I didn't think it was overperforming, but again, in a 1v1 or 2v2 scenario, I could, I could see it, but I, I don't. I mean, you would get a Vaketan or AT at that point, or you'd Panzerfaust it to death. Main gun penetration, main gun damage versus infantry. Uh, the cost was meh. 
Sun rounds only disable weapons in sight, does not affect movement. Okay. M15 half track. I kind of don't care about the fucking half track. OKW, Stoom Pioneers. Uh, what half track is this? AA half track. Oh, is that the fucking thing? Because, see, the funny thing is, I don't actually look at the names most of the time. Manpower reduced. Yeah, it wasn't that great, but it was okay if you could micro it properly because it just had a weird turn because you'd have to face it backwards. You know what I mean? It didn't really go all the way around. Maximum health recreased at, at Veteran C, that's fine, but it's Veteran C3. I haven't seen a Veteran 3 AA half track at all. Main gun damage versus infantry. Negative 50%, that's dumb. Manpower cost reduced is okay. Um, yeah. Eventually the bonus compa Ooh, okay. You got that you got that extra pennant veterans in three, but this is a little bit too much, I think. OKW, Sturmpine. Give the changes to light vehicles. We felt that risk versus reward for the mechanism would become too high due to it's an offering type of feeling. To convert and Sturmpine have medical supplies available from the start. Nice. Nice. Let's make OKW overpower let's make people go OKW even fucking more. Um but I guess it's okay because I always told people to go make HQ first, especially if the, the enemy really didn't have any anti-tank and they went a lot of MGs because the looks was just too good. Panzerfaust. Yeah, this this is not looking good for other factions. Because already you reduce it from 35 to 25. Requires... Oh, this is dumb. Requires the vehicle to be summoned. Into, that is so stupid. That is so stupid. I think. Yeah, that's that's really fucking dumb. This th this right here shouldn't shouldn't have happened. Due to the changes made to stealth of a cannon has become overly vulnerable to infantry flanks. We feel this leaves the the performance of the Vicent Murphy somewhat lacking against vehicles. Reduced ready to aim time of Vicent Murphy. Uh it's okay, Vicent Murphy was a little bit pain in the ass. It fired way too fast, especially at higher veterancy, but increase the fire aim time. Reduce the ready aim time. What's the difference? Reduce ready aim time, fire aim time. Eh, too stupid. So the fly cap track was underperforming, no shit. As well as anti infantry due to its, its immobility and vulnerability to vehicle rushes. Yeah, but it took too long to fucking set up. That was the problem. So the penetration is increased, defense is smoke, no longer requires vet 1, which is good. Um, vet now. Defense smoke from 10, from 25 to 10. I don't like that because... And already is going to be annoying. Minimum range removed. Heartbreak ability and red unwanted movement. Wouldn't you add the handbrake to all fucking vehicles? Um, build time from 45 to 60. Meh. But then, it, if you have too much smoke, then it could be a huge problem. Because it's already only 10 munitions, so it's like just an easy getaway. Depending upon the situation. That could prove very, very deadly. And minimum range removed too as well. The following changes to aim looks more consistent as damage output. Giving opposing players enough time to react to the engagement. As soon as we're making the main gun, it looks ignore. Suppression modifiers of the target, we also increase the performance of looks. So, suppression modifier, does that mean so when something is suppressed, they take more damage? Which I'm pretty sure it does. Ignore suppression, so it won't do more damage to someone who is suppressed, okay? Looks, looks will ignore cover of nearby infantry units if driven up within 10 meters from the similar to small arms fire, i.e. the point-blank mechanic. Manpower reduces good. Fuel cost reduces good. Um, moving accuracy is cool. The looks MG accuracy went down because it's 0 1.04 to 1. Infantry quiet lowered. Overall, I think they're okay changes. Wait, Veteran C5 Suppression. I've never seen a level 5 look, so I don't think any of this really matters. Turn to Suppressor Fire Ability. Suppress Enemy Squads, 10 Edition Cost. Um, I don't really care, because again, no one's going to really get it to Vet 5. Puma Aim Shot Ability. Ability would make it so that the Puma would make the best vehicle for wiping out We've made the following accuracy versus every suffer additional penalties while the Puma is moving. I've never seen a Puma be really good at fucking killing infantry, or also be the best for wiping out infantry squads. Maybe for chasing one or two infantry that are retreating, maybe it'd be okay, but 
I don't see this as a yeah. So Brits, let's see what happened to the Brits. We feel that Piats are primarily influence of why the British are experiencing a disparity in the early and late game entertainment. Keep suppose a problem between game mode skill levels and map due to the fact that they must be manually and precisionally aimed. The following changes will make more percent easier. Okay. Gave Piat's homing projector. I think that's the least thing they fucking need. To be honest. Because I've seen people do really good with them. A lot of people don't. If you have three or four infantry section with a shit ton of Piat's, any tank is going to get raped. I'm pretty sure of this. Range reduce is nice. I don't like the homing thing. It's sort of like the Panzerfaust. I really don't like it. Munition cost, okay. Reload time increased. Uh, increased scanners that Piat and Rec Farm are unreliable, especially when the user is suppressed. Eh. Eh. We have found that Samper Squad simply scale too well due to the reduced reinforcement cost bonus they receive at Vet 3. I haven't seen Royal Engineers at Vet 3 in a long fucking time. So, please show me this. Samper reinforcement cost from 13 manpower to 20 manpower. That's dumb. That's huge. You might as well go to like 15 or 16. Can only equip one Bren gun per squad. Kind of stupid. But then again, you could equip Rear Echelon with fucking two bazookas. So, I don't know. So we found that the anti infantry dam was too potent for for a vehicle with so much anti tank capability. Uh, it's squishy as fuck. It gets Panzerfaust in an AT and it's screwed. So I don't see how it was great at killing infantry. I don't necessarily see people use it to kill infantry. So I Treadbreaker tr turret rotation to Treadbreaker will increase makes it more reliable. I don't fucking understand this. Con quality of light changes. Um, we'll take a look at some of this. <clears throat> but, I like how, you know, you know, this is funny, that, uh, people complained about, uh, artillery cover or something like that, and, yeah, I, I thought it was really funny that they didn't do anything about it, or nerf it to the ground, because so many people complained about it too, which I think is funny. Uh, for Brits, the Piants, I don't know, as for Royal Engineers, I think it's dumb. And this is dumb, too, as well. Actually, I like this as smoke cooldown. Anything that buffs it is good, because I do believe buffing early game, you know, you know, Puma looks, armored car, the scout car, and other stuff. It's just that, I think, I don't know. It's just the armored car, not scout car, the armored car for the Vemok is so, so trash. Just so trash, just, uh... Quality of life changes. We feel there's a disparity in how squads are assigned formations, which is impacting squad performance. To address this problem, we've implemented the following changes. Give all squad members a roughly equal breathing space, regardless of the size of the squad. Be it two members or six. Unwanted clumping. Okay. Allow stealth-oriented squad to be better utilized creator whenever available without bringing the formation, but without clumping too much either. You know, it would have been nice if you went this way, and if it really, quote, quote, works... If uh, you added it when you wanted to stop one-shotting squads, that'd be very nice. That'd be very nice. But you'll never stop one-shotting squads or squads getting completely wiped out from something just because it's always going to happen in this game. <clears throat> Ghost War Sam is named for the common exploit in competitive play, which allows particular... Yeah, you complete half a, half a wire in front of a sandbag. It doesn't allow people... Yeah, this is much needed. This is much needed. The, the, this was dumb to begin with. Retreat point decongestion. The base layout of several armies make it so that retreating infantry units often get caught up in high congested areas. This is particularly make it difficult for nearby station max to reach your Squads will hold the retreat within 10 meters from the designated retreat point. For OKW, we'll also use the weapon rack as four retreat points. OKW for retreat antennas can now be traversed by units. So, I like this. But I think that, uh, well, mainly when I thought of this, I thought of uh, waiting for an OKW to retreat all of his units, then use artillery or something to kill all of his units while they're all clumped up. But overall, it's okay. Base structure rotation. Soviet engineers and Vanmark pioneers will be able to select the rotation of base buildings to allow it to optimize paths as well as create unique layouts. Introduce improvements. Okay, this is just general stuff that I kind of don't care about. That I'm not going to read through. Infantry units can target their snares and decrew abandoned vehicles. Okay. And arrest bug fixes that I'm not going going to read. So what do I think overall of this? I think some of it's really stupid. And you know what's me? 
this just proves one thing that Relic does not still not know how to balance stuff. They still don't. I, I don't think they. I, 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 this is what I believe. Now, some things are good, some things are bad, and I know I've always hated Relic to a point, but I feel like, especially with Company Furious 2 because of THQ and them going under and blah, 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 I still believe that that Relic does not put that much effort into Company Furious 2. I mean, with, and, and especially with balancing it too, whoever's in charge of balancing, and a massive thank you goes out to community members, Kyle starts to make the, the following balance changes possible. You know, you should be hiring your own internal team to balance this shit out. Look at community feedback, but also take community feedback with a grain of salt, a.k.a. Fury Company, and a lot of other things too. Now, I'm not saying I know the be-all, end-all, but I do believe that uh, that they just don't know how to balance. And I think they don't care. And if you actually ever looked on some of their streams that they do for patches or blah, 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 a lot of the developers look like they don't give one fuck about the game, the balance, or whatever. And yeah, that's that's it. That's what I believe. Overall, it's meh. What they did to the Soviets is stupid as fuck. What they did to the Americans is... What did they do to the Americans? I totally forgot already. Uh, the Stuart was stupid. Yeah, a lot of the stuff is a little bit stupid, except the mortar and the rifleman one was kind of stupid, too. Uh, this half-track was kind of dumb. Oh, wait, no. No, I take that back, sorry. But in terms of this, for OKW, this right here just destroys everything. Again, Why? Just why? I don't know. Just whatever. Anyways, guys, I want to thank you. And I believe they could have done, actually, too, before I end. They could have done a lot more with Brits, too. But, yeah. Anyways, I want to thank you all for watching. And I hope you enjoyed.